Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. Now, I often say we are all on a journey towards Chaps Nirvana, and I think to myself, what skills am I going to need on that journey? And I've distilled the skills down to the 15 essential pieces of knowledge that I think every gentleman needs on his journey to that fabled chap nirvana because there are going to be bumps and twists and turns in the road and these are the things that will ease your path. Now as this is generally a style channel I thought I'd start off with some style items that will help you along. And the first essential skill that any gentleman is going to need is have in your mind at least two different ways that you can tie up a necktie. The two minimum knots that you're going to need to know are the four in hand, as I'm wearing now, because I'm wearing a knitted tie, so it's quite a chunky tie knot, or the half Windsor, which is perfect for a nice symmetrical silk tie. I'm not going to show you how to do them. Do your own research. Look it up on YouTube. You will find many people who will explain to you how to do those ties. But a four in hand and a half Windsor, you need to know. Now the next skill that you will benefit from is for sure the ability to put a mirror shine on a pair of shoes. It will teach you discipline. It will teach you the knowledge of looking after your shoes. But it will most importantly create a mystical first impression when you meet people. Because so few people know how to put a good mirror shine on a pair of shoes. I've done many videos on my channel showing how to achieve that wonderful mystical shine. So look them up, but learn that skill. It will do you so well as you go through life if your shoes have the best shine of anybody else in the room. You're already nine tenths of the way to winning that first impression battle. Now my tip number three is for God's sake, learn how to iron. I do not care if you live at home with your mother and she does all your laundry, or you're married to a spectacular wife or husband and they iron everything for you. There will be an occasion where you need to put that iron on your clothing to get a nice sharp crease in your trousers or to correct a creased jacket because you've packed your jacket, you've gone to a conference, and when you get the jacket out of your suitcase, there are creases all over the place. Learn how to iron. It's a skill which will be with you for life. It costs nothing, yet it makes all the difference in your clothing. Now, the next piece of advice I'm going to give you is to have a needle and thread in your life and know how to use it. Now, I was taught how to use a needle and thread when I joined the military for all those occasions where you need to make ad hoc repairs to your clothing. And that's as equally valid in daily life as it was back then. You're just about to go out for a big night and the hem of your trousers falls down or a button comes off your shirt. You need to know how to effect simple and quick repairs to your clothing and you can do that yourself by using a needle and thread. It's not difficult. All of these skills are easily acquired and will be with you forever. Learn how to use a needle and thread. Now my next tip is learn to dress for the occasion. Because as you go through life, there are many situations which will pop up which have a certain dress code. Weddings, funerals, appearing in court, going to a job interview, and all of those other things. How are you expected to know what to wear to all these occasions? Well, you need to pick up that knowledge as you go along. Read on the subject. I've done a review on this channel about a great book called Dressing the Man by Alan Flusser, which really fills in lots of gaps about what you're expected to wear to certain occasions. And let's be honest, the internet is a perfect place to do your research. So if you've got a big event coming up in your life, don't just assume you can wear what you always wear. Find out what the protocol is and learn to dress for that occasion. I don't want you to be the odd person out and look a fool. Now my next tip for you is away from style but more a life skill which will absolute serve you well if you can master it and that is achieve confidence in public speaking because 
Glossophobia, which is the technical term for fear of public speaking, holds so many people back in their personal and their professional lives. And if you can master a skill of public speaking, it will give you as I say, a virtual superpower in your abilities when it comes to things like job interviews, presenting in front of other people. On the occasion where you're asked to be a best man in your friend's wedding, you will be ready because you are a competent public speaker. Now, there are many ways you can do this. Go out there and research them, but practice is generally the key. The more public speaking you do, the more comfortable you get at it and the better you will become. But Achieve competence in public speaking and it'll serve you exceptionally well in your life. Now, my next tip for you is a little bit more physical. It is learn the value of exercise and incorporate it in your life to reap the benefits of both physical and mental well-being. Now, we all live busy, exceptionally active lives and we always put things like exercising to one side because it's not an essential. I would argue there is little in life which is more essential than your health and well-being. Do not sideline exercise because you want to spend an extra hour in work. Exercise should be the thing that you prioritize. If you can do that, you will be both physically healthy and mentally well for longer and you will be happier during the course of your life. And of course, if you're happy and confident and well, all other aspects of your life will flourish as well. So exercise to make your life a better thing to live in. Now this next skill also takes a little bit of time to master, but it will pay you back. And that is learn to shave with a razor blade. Stop using those cartridge razors, which cost a pile of money and fail to give you the shave which you deserve. Instead, learn to shave with a razor blade because razor blades are very cost effective. They cost just pennies instead of pounds or dollars as those cartridge razors cost. And also they give you a much more enjoyable, closer shave, which will serve you better over the passing of time. Believe me, when you master the razor shave, shaving is no longer a chore, it becomes a pleasure and that's where you wanna be. So learn to shave with a razor blade. Now the next tip I have for you will be good for you and those around you, and that is learn how to cook, or at the very least have one or two signature dishes that you can trot out when you need to impress other people. Now, whether it's inviting friends around, you wanna cook them something nice to eat that you have the skill to do yourself, you don't have to order it in, or, you know, if it's a special occasion, you've got a date coming round and you want to impress him or her with that wonderful meal that you made yourself from scratch. Being able to cook will impress others and it's a skill which you can use every day because you need to eat every day. So learn to cook and it'll pay you well. Now, now we're talking about social situations because we're cooking for people. The next skill I suggest you have is learn how to hold a good conversation with people because so many people find it difficult to make small talk with people that they meet in a social situation. It becomes awkward. They start staring down at their shoes or out through the window and you get those difficult silences which are challenging to break. Remember, when it comes to a conversation, it's all about the listening and not the talking. Remember the equation? Two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you talk. That will make you an excellent communicator and a good conversationalist. And it's a great place to start. Now in this social situation we're in, there's one skill which you need to have, and that is learn how to hold your drink, your liquor. Because there is nothing worse than going to a party or an event, drinking a little bit too much, and saying or doing things which you regret later. So know your limits, right? Know what you're drinking, how much you're drinking, and how that is going to affect you. There is nothing worse than meeting somebody a week after you met them in a party, and they laugh and tell you about something which you did, which you can't remember because you were sozzled at the time because you drank too much and you couldn't hold your drink. 
Learn how to hold your drink to avoid those embarrassing situations. My next tip is learn the value of good manners, because believe me, there is nothing more important in the skills that a gentleman possesses than the etiquette and courtesy by which he treats other people. If there's nothing else you do, treat people as you would like your mother to be treated by them, because that way it's a really good standard to set, you know, things like never swearing, never using jargon or gossiping about other people, and people will always think of you as the courteous, well-mannered person, and that's how you want to be remembered. Now another tip on the good manners front, which will absolutely make people remember you as a decent sort of guy, is learn how to put pen to paper, write a letter or send a note of thank you or regard. In this era, where electronic communication is the way that everybody communicates, there is something special, something majestic about receiving a thank you note in the post. It's such an important skill to have to write a letter of thanks. It'll make the world of difference, whether it's thanks or condolence or congratulations, if somebody receives it in the post and it's written by your own hand, in your own handwriting, it makes the world of difference. Now my next tip is a bit of a life goal really, and that's I want you to ask yourself a question, what is my passion? And if you can't answer that question easily, you have to think about it, it means you don't have a passion in life. And if you don't have a passion, what drives you? What gives you pleasure? What makes you get up every day? It's not your job, it's not the people around you, you need to have a passion. So if you can't answer that question easily, quickly and immediately, it's time you got yourself a passion. And finally, my last tip to set you well on your journey to Chap Nirvana is use your time well. Because we only have a predetermined amount of time on this planet. And the beauty of the human condition, none of us know when that time is going to come to an end. It might be in an hour, it might be in 50 years. So we need to use that time as well as we possibly can. And how I suggest you use it, volunteer some of your spare time. That is a tip which will pay you back well. Now I've been a charity volunteer or a supporter of various non-profit organizations throughout my whole adult life. And I cannot tell you of the way that that volunteering has benefited me in return. It's paid me back a hundredfold to the time that I have donated to those charities. It has propelled me forward in different elements of my life merely by giving a tiny proportion of my time. So if you don't already do it, my final tip to you today is to volunteer your time and use your time well. So there we are, chaps. I hope you've enjoyed those 15 life skills that I think will work well for you on your journey towards the path of Chap Nirvana. If you have enjoyed today's video, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. If you think I missed any, any skills out, drop them in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Until the next time, keep honing those skills, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again very soon.